Oh, man. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sapkuche. And trying to get this up and running over here. Give me a second. There it goes. Wow. Come on. Why is it taking so long? I should be live already. Come on. There it goes. Finally, the computer is catching up. About 10 seconds later. So, all right. Oh. <laughs> What's up, Leo? How you doing, bud? I'm going to see if this works. I know I did it the other night. I was uh, eating the halls and it kind of woke me up. So definitely going to do this. I already went and made a weight delivery out at uh, Four Day Outfitters this morning. So what's up, Luciano? How you doing? Everybody already hard at work or y'all enjoying the day off? I know the kids got the day off from school, so... Finishing off cleaning the weights. What I got to do is clean off the bottom right there. Those, the lead that coming off the bottom of the legs right there. Got to take that off. So, what's up, Jaime? How you doing? Summer, how you doing? William, what's up, Devil Dog? Rock. And, um, I got almost eleven o'clock here. It's ten fifty-nine. We're at Central Standard Time, so. I am, well, I'm cleaning off my stainless steel surf weights. These are the weights we make in-house. These are my light gauge. Um, I'll be working on some heavy gauge here in a while. I got a, I already got the wires cut that I did last night. Um, I didn't do a whole bunch, but I did probably 30 or 40 of them and stuff like that, so. What's up, Toby? See, see, see you knocking somebody off real quick. Um, how you doing, sir? There you go. <laughs> um, these are surf weights, so that way when you're out fishing on the beach and you cast your line out, it'll dig in the sand to keep it from drifting right or left, because our currents, when we cast out, they run right or left up the beach. And if you don't have a surf weight, they drift off on you and you get tangled up with your other lines that are out there. Um, it definitely can make or break your day if you don't have the right surf rates. Um, on the very rare occasion that we're out there and we don't need a surf weight is awesome, but at the same time too, fish love current. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. I didn't, I didn't see what he posted, but I, I trust my Blue Ranchers here, guys. If y'all are new to the channel, we keep it family oriented here. Um, no hate, discontent. I mean, we crack jokes with each other, but they're clean enough so that way the kids can enjoy. You know, so we do have kids that watch the channel, come here to learn, and we definitely don't don't stray away from that so we'd rather have them here learning about fishing than learning about other things out on the street so yeah. well you're on the right channel to ask your questions i've got a bunch of videos up on the channel that if you've never done it i would highly recommend you binge watching the channel because it's going to teach you a lot of knowledge and it'll also get you an idea of what kind of fishing you want to get into what kind of gear to use and stuff like that so uh, that I, I can tell you is the best way to go about it. We also teach you ways on how to save money. So that way, if you're just getting into it, cause fishing, it can get expensive really, really fast, depending on which way you want to go. So if you haven't done it, I would highly, before you spend any money, watch the channel, go through our videos, see what kind of fishing interests you. And then we can set up a game plan at that point. So. Oh wow, I've seen I've seen some channels where they they use uh, 
uh, cans like that and make big old lures out of them and stuff. So, yeah, it, it does pretty cool. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. Uh, I saw a meme the other day that, you know, my body says I'm, you know, 12 years old, but my body died in the Civil War. <laughs> that, that, was, that was about right on point. <laughs> Yeah. So I took a drive out to Port Aransas this morning. I already went and made a weight delivery. Uh, it's about a about thirty. It's about a thirty-five minute round trip from my shop to the to Port Aransas to go make the delivery. So you can tell I've been at it for a little bit. So what's up, bro? How you doing? We actually we were jamming out to your music last night. Uh, cause me and Jacob, because we're trying to find uh, or play music uh, while we're live on the channel and stuff like that. So we had your music going and pretty good. <clears throat> Paul, you use the same. Have a blessed day. Be safe. And we'll see you on another video. Um, starting to do more lives because I'm starting to see that we're actually getting a lot of traction while the videos are live on the channel. So that definitely does help us because we get, we're reaching a lot more people, but we are also looking at another deal to be able to um, reach more platforms. So stay tuned for that as we will be working on that. That'll be pretty awesome. So um, let's see. See, I've actually used the Shimano Sienna reels, and yeah, for the money, they, they are decent, but again, too, they aren't they aren't going to be lasting 10 seasons, you know what I mean? So, um, after a while, you're going to have to be replacing parts, so some of the upgraded reels will have the same features as that one, but the parts are better made, so they last a lot longer. So, I would do some research on that. Uh, and before you continue buying on a reel, because that was that was one of the biggest selling points for me and Abbott reels. Uh, I grew up in Shimano, Newell, Ambassador. Uh, basically, I had 27 rod and reel combos. And then I got introduced to the Abbots. And, you know, it, to me, it was like turning on the lights and the roaches scattering. I realized that I didn't have to, uh, that yes, I invested a lot of money into them. However, the long run money has where I've been seeing the savings because all those reels, the Shimano's, the Pins, the Newell's, every season I had to send them in to get fixed. So, you know, 10 years down the road, you now have a seven to eight hundred or a thousand dollar reel that still basically is a two hundred dollar reel. And the reason being because you send it in to get fixed and you're anywhere from 80 to 100 bucks every single time. And then you're without a reel for those amount of weeks or months or whatever. And it has just progressively gotten worse because of since the pandemic, nothing has returned to normal uh, and it probably never will. You know, a lot of real companies have actually discontinued parts on a ton of reels. So if you got uh, that going on, it can really cost you in the long run. So, uh, Oh man, you're in for a drive. No, not reels in yet, boss. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I know they built a whole bunch of uh, one ounce egg weights and stuff like that. So whatever, whatever we're short on, we'll, we'll concentrate on those. But uh, actually, I I, I would prefer you to work on the Jack Crabell rigs if you've already done that. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yes, yes, sir, it does. Uh, now, uh, actually, I got to check the phone real quick because I was hearing something from Portland a little while ago.
I was uh, Cortland uh, Richard at Cortland Braid. Um, he was asking how how we like the colors on the Forest Bulls, and if y'all haven't seen them, let me grab those real quick. Check this out. Those are the colors that they have come out with with Corbin. And this is their master braid, which is their solid braid. And I was like, man, I like that. But we don't really have a lot of customer base for the solid braids. So we stick mainly to the hollow core. However, we can get the solids in for the customers that request it and stuff like that. And, and it's not going to be a special charge. A lot of times we get asked that, well, how much is a special charge? They're like, there is none. Like, we already order the product. We just don't carry it in stock. You know what I mean? So we end up saving the customers a lot of money. And I'm just waiting for them to, to release the, the hollow core braid so we can get spools. I've got one of each of uh, those spools on order right now. So I'm uh, ready to see how that's going to go. Um, yeah. I want to get some of that on my reels too because some of it's going to match up perfectly. And then they're they're still pretty bright too, so that's what I'm gonna look at as well while I'm out fishing. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Leo, you have a good one, boss. Hopefully, you get some fishing done. Uh, I drove, like I said, I drove out to Port A. I saw some people fishing in the channel today, but not as much as I had been over the over the last several days, I guess too, because it is Friday. So <laughs> it switches off from the week, the weekly fishermen to the weekend fishermen, and a lot of those guys are off um, today. So it's going to be definitely a change up on who's out there fishing and stuff like that. So some of the week weekly guys don't care; they'll fish through the weekend. But other guys like to switch off and you know take it easy during the week, so they don't have to worry about all the foot traffic of other fishermen on the water at the same time too. So which I can understand, you know. Let's see. Yeah. Getting ready to do some. Uh, once I clean off these weights, I'll get them posted up because actually we port these as extra for an order. Um, we only needed 12, but I think we poured 100 and something surf weights. So, gonna see them. Gonna see them. Yes, sir. Pretty colors. Yep. And then later on today, we will be holding our fire drawing as well. Uh, I haven't decided if we're going to do a $20 pot or stick with the $10 pot. We'll, we'll see how everybody feels about it and stuff like that. Thinking the $10 or even a $5. I mean, a $5 one went berserk <laughs> last time we did it. So, you know, definitely would like some input. We know how everybody's kind of saved, you know, saving some money for the weekend. So we might might fluctuate on that which I'm game for. We'll see. Yeah, Jeff came in today, so he's out there pouring pouring weights. And then uh, I did figure out how much uh, weights were broken down last night, and it came out to 25 pounds of lead, which um, horrible, horrible numbers for us because... Uh, a few weeks ago, I actually was out there pouring lead, and when I worked the three molds, and I did that in 18 minutes of open pour, you know, and put in the brass eyelets, uh, all, all those molds equated to 20 pounds of lead poured out in 18 minutes. So every 18 minutes, I could put out, put out 20 pounds of lead. Well, when the worker got in yesterday, it was only 25 pounds after five hours. So I really had to make a tough call yesterday and something I don't like to do. And uh, just means now we're going to have to carry carry the weight of what he would have done, which, to tell you the truth, ain't, ain't going to be that much harder. But it is going to be having an extra body to be able to go out and do um, those other work areas and stuff like that. So it's all right. I don't mind working hard. <laughs> you sure did, William. Yeah, you did on that five dollar one for sure. So, yes, sir. So, what's everybody's plans for Easter? 
definitely uh, got to see what we're going to do. Uh, don't know just yet what the plan is. <clears throat> Yes, sir. No, it is. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and I try try my best to, you know, pay more, you know, for, for those that warrant it and stuff like that. But when you start breaking down the numbers and you show them that they're not there yet, they don't they really don't like to hear that. But at the same time, you know. I, I got to run a business, and if they can't produce the amount of uh, gear or tackle that is needed to warrant their pay, then they they really got to step up the game to make it there. So, we are moving forward. So we've got a couple of, well, actually, we still have partial orders of those, the two that should have been done yesterday, just out there making the final push to clean those off because, again, uh, I wasn't out there to be able to pour the lead myself. And uh, with running the shop or trying to keep it open, it does make it pretty difficult trying to do both things at once. So now that Jeff's out there, it's really going to make that push to clean that out and bring more tackle in because, as you all noticed, a few weeks ago, we were pretty empty on uh, <laughs> a lot of the gear we had in-house because... The orders that we got, we supply other tackle shops with our fishing tackle. And because of that, we stock up in here, but I also want to stock up in the back. But being a few guys short does make it really hard when you're trying to do both. But we'll get back on track. I ain't too worried about it. Yeah, well, that's good. Nah, it's pretty awesome when the family can get together and Enjoy a blessed day for sure. And yes, also to the lottery tickets, I've not checked to see what we made on the other day's drawing. Here, here, I'll check it out here in a bit. If I can break away, that's the other thing too. So normally. With the, the extra guy here pulling weight, we can actually keep me and Jeff here and we can rock and roll. You know, one must leave, go, go make errands and stuff like that. But we're just going to have to do without for right now. Ooh, fried fish, man, last night. <laughs> I don't know who, how many of y'all were on the, the video last night, but we were talking about foods and stuff like that. Oh, man. How many of y'all went out today and or planning to go and have some of the, the foods that we were talking about last night? I want to see if it made an impact. I know for sure with me, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. But again, I got to balance out the time away from the shop or time it to where, you know, hopefully nobody comes through. We did miss out on sales yesterday because... Uh, I wasn't able to keep the shop open while I was out running the errands that needed to be ran. So, what's up, John? How you doing, boss? Yes, definitely. Well, there's six of y'all watching and six thumbs up. <laughs> pretty pretty slow morning. It's all right. It's all right. We'll keep it rocking. So for those of y'all that are on the channel, if you had one place that you can go fish or one fish that you could wish you can go today, like you're there fishing, what fish would that be? Dang it, fish and chips yesterday, nice. For me, God, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. I think today, because I'm, uh, I feel a little chill in here. I think I would have to go someplace where it's nice and warm, and to put on a big fish, it would have to be. Mm. <clears throat> I think I would really like to catch either a mako or a marlin if I had the opportunity, or even a tuna, because I know. 
it's probably a little too hot for tuna right now. Um, normally the guys like to go when the water's a lot colder, so definitely. Yeah, I was thinking halibut too. I really was. <laughs> but again, too, I was thinking about someplace warm, so yeah. See, West, yeah. All right. Um, oh, also, real quick question, guys. I saw something, and I haven't been able to follow the news. Have we had more than one bridge collapse or something catch on fire um, for any bridges? I know the one uh, that the cargo ship, you know, hit is one of them, but. I, I haven't been able to follow the news at all, so... Ooh, hammer, hammer, hammer. Yes, sir. There you go. Huh? Oh, man. You know, talking about tuna makes me makes me wish I was out at Jumaya uh, to go get some tuna today, but again, we're kind of stuck. I'm almost done with this tray here. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are keeping track of how many weights that I'm actually doing, but. Okay, okay, cool. All right, and also, too, have y'all seen the video? See, I don't know if it's legit or not. You know, everything, what is it? You know, don't believe everything you hear and half of what you see. So um, I know the first day that about the barge happening, you know, and seeing that, it, it, I told you my thoughts on it. And again, those are just my thoughts of me being me. But there's some videos coming out now that are showing that there was explosives or explosive blasts in the video, and that that is something else. Like, have y'all seen that? Has any of that been confirmed yet? I mean, or or people playing with the internet kind of deal and making making stuff like that happen? Because when you look at the video, it does look pretty pretty legit. So, Stephanie, thank you. Yeah. I'm, You okay? I I would I would think that Toby, but you got to see in the video before anything even moves. You see it, you see it go, and then everything start to collapse. If it was going, and then you saw that, then I could say, yeah, I would agree with the high voltage seal. But if you look at the videos, they happen before anything really happens to that portion of the bridge. So it definitely is. Is like I said, I'm kind of looking at it both ways. <laughs> and how are you doing, Stephanie? Thank you. Um, thank you for chiming in on the channel. Also, do you do what kind of fishing do you do? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm like I said, boss. I I, I kind of thought that too, but then you know I went back and rewatched the video, and. Yeah, it, it happened before any of that portion of the bridge actually started to move. But then again, too, when the the initial portion started to collapse, yes, it could have pulled those lines from those areas. But at the same time, too, yeah, yeah, because you saw them go from here to here to here, you know, work its way out that way. So, yeah, no, I mean, that that still could be very a very viable... Uh, thing to, to look at. I'm definitely going to have to look back at the videos that I've seen of them pointing that out. 
slow them down and see where the uh, that's actually coming to, to think about. So <clears throat> there we go. Now my lines are nice and straight there. So I was going so fast last night, and, I, and yeah, I was tired. Um, I went to about two in the morning, so. Oh, okay, Stephanie, thank you. And yeah, no, we, we, we are definitely looking at that. But again, too, you know, uh, not trying to talk conspiracy, but again, you know, how they were talking about the, the, the towers, you know, a lot of research has been done on that in both, you know, the government saying one thing and then, you know, everybody else who has done other kinds of research and stuff like that show that other th other factors were involved, especially with those types of buildings and stuff like that. So it's just keeping an open mind, you know what I mean? And, and seeing the way the government is working now, it is or not working for us as I was just thinking, and this kind of crossed my mind. Right now, with everything going the way it's going, they had to give them something else to think about. You know what I mean? They, 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 they're not focused on, you know, what they're doing. They're trying to do a sleight of hand over here. That's what I was kind of thinking when I first saw that. And I was like, damn it. I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all. I'm not. I'm just thinking, you know, outside the box kind of deal. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm hoping it is fake. I really am. It's just, you know, listening to all the, the, uh, <clears throat> the other guys that they, they even talked about, they uh, uh, dropped the anchor on the ship, but it was on the opposite side, so it should have pulled the boat in the opposite direction kind of deal. That was something else that, like, wasn't posted up at the very beginning. I don't know if y'all heard that one or not. Um but, yeah, that the ship had dropped anchor, and, well, obviously, when you drop anchor, it's going to pull toward the anchor, and it didn't do that. So, I don't know. What's up, Oscar? How you doing, boss? Get me a nice stack of weights right here. <laughs> kind of an off topic to be talking about on the fishing channel, but you know, it's real life for us here. We don't just talk about fishing, we talk about kind of everything out there and stuff like that because you know, it's happening, it's happening. Oh, man, yeah, I could definitely go for a coffee. But that, um, doing the uh, cough drop, that, that worked a bit. But kind of getting a runny nose, I don't know if it's because it's, oh, it is 67 in here. Wow. The temperatures did drop last night, and it got into the 60s, so that's probably why it's nice and cool in here this morning. So. And I'll show you where I'm at on my weights. Hmm. Yep. Getting in some work. Oh yeah, no doubt, Stephanie. No doubt. I'm I'm not easily swayed in. I don't believe everything. And that's why I made the comment earlier, you know, believe only half of what you see and um, of what you hear as well, obviously. I'm just, that's why I'm, I'm looking to y'all because I know a lot of y'all, you know, definitely are on, or like me, that we're, we're trying to ensure that we're making the best decision we can and we're not about just spreading vicious rumors or, 
uh, untruthful thoughts and stuff like that. So I definitely, definitely am not doing that. That's why I'm just kind of sharing what, what's running through my head and, you know, getting some insight from everybody else on the channel as well. So. <clears throat> Yes, sir. Toby. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, for sure on that. And that and that I'm a firm believer on 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 that as well, because like I said I have a ton of haters that hate me on the stuff they've heard instead of actually coming out and meeting me. And then when they finally meet me, then they realize, damn, he's not that guy that they were saying. It was like, yeah, it happens. It happens. Uh, it's pretty cool. I, I don't really make a big, big deal when they, they're talking about that, but they do bring it up and stuff. I'm like, well, we'll let them keep thinking what they want to think until they, they come out and they meet me, and then it's a different story. So, <clears throat> and, and y'all know me, guys. I'm, I live on that every day because when I'm being told one thing about fishing tackle, I'm like, all right, well, I got to try it out myself, like I, I do, you know. Now, some things I'm not going to try out myself. Like, I saw one guy, he wanted to create uh, traction on his vehicle, so he put a whole bunch of screws into his tires. I was like, okay, no, not going not, not gonna to happen. <laughs> and I wonder how many people actually went out and did that. Like, ah, oh, that's just... That, Dummy dummies. <laughs> Almost done. I think I got like 20 more left. <laughs> 20 more after what y'all saw earlier on the video. So, yeah. Oh, and a little update since you kind of brought up about my hip. Um, I have been noticing that for a while there, like, I had a lot of, like, elect tingling in, in my leg. And I believe it was from, like, all the nerves reconnecting themselves or doing what they needed to do in the leg. But, yeah, it's already, you know, going to, it's, what, over a year already? And still kind of having those pains and feelings. So I might be setting up an appointment to go talk to them to see, like, will that ever stop? Like. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Toby, we'll see you in a bit. <clears throat> this is the one thing I, I don't like about the, uh, oh, about the Roku devices. Like every four hours, I have to retell it to uh, continue playing and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, like that's why I bought it, so I don't have to do this. And, like, I have to sit there and confirm it every single time, and it sucks. All right, here we go. <clears throat> yeah. Wow, yeah. And um, what I'd like to do is get the original video and break it down myself, you know what I mean? I just, uh, I guess some guys were out there fishing when it happened, when it all happened and stuff like that. So um, I know some guys were trying to point out, well, why do we only have one video from one angle and this and that? And it's just like, well... <laughs> Not everybody's always recording boats coming in the channel or out of the harbor and stuff like that. So that kind of ends that. Uh, no, not yet. From line cutters, I got in their, uh, their price listing and stuff like that now. However... I do have the gear that was given to me, and I don't mind selling it for the meantime while I'm waiting for my order, because um, I, you know, I definitely was given that as part of a sponsorship. Um, so 
I don't mind. I don't mind selling that. You know, I'll replace it because definitely want to keep it at hand for whenever I need it and stuff like that. There's multiple items on there that are ready to go. Does that look correct? It's the line I found back there. Yes. Yeah, for the 1.3. Your third. Now I'm going to use those snaps right here. But that's all I have right now. Um, you had the other. Uh, that one pack I opened mm -hmm. was one of these and one of the other ones that you got the little. The like ones. these? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a ton of those back there. Oh, you're talking about the other ones, the smaller ones, right? Yeah, they're a little smaller. Than this. Yeah. Um, I have not been able to go shopping for those, but... Um, the ones you bought, these. That's fine. That's fine. Do uh, you have any three ways? Four? Let me check what we do on the other side. Six, seven, eight. Uh, eight. Seven, seven, seven. Well, what you can do too, in the Yeah, no, I did see the video where the lights came on, they went off on the ship and all of that. Um, now, they're talking about a large plume of smoke that came from the boat. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what that's from because, you know, will a ship... I, didn't, uh, I guess the question I'm asking is, like, does that ship, you know, put out that much smoke when it's refiring up an engine or... How does that work? I'm, I've never been on a big old cargo container boat like that and how those ships work. So that that is my question. Like, why do they keep talking about that big old large plume of smoke coming from the ship? So. <coughs> Smoke of the emergency generator. Damn, that much smoke from the emergency generator?
Pratt. And the reason why I'm asking that about the emergency generator, because I know when I was on offshore sandblasting and painting, we were on big, big boats that uh, were floating oil rig platforms that would do the drilling and stuff like that. Um, you know, and a lot of times we would sit there and just run fire drills and or they would like cut the power to everything and get the, the, the backup generators going and. I don't remember, you know, even in broad daylight, seeing that much smoke coming off of their backup systems kicking on and stuff like that. So, I, I but again, too, I don't know how big that ship was that I was on in comparison to those. I mean, it looked big like those, but I, I, I don't know, to, to, to be honest with you. Hmm. Well, um, I can grab that here in just a second. Let me let me see what we have. Last two, got two more. This one and one more. My stack of weights is getting a little too high. It's starting to collapse on itself here, but give me a second. I'll show you what I got. Done. That was all in that one tray that I was working with here. All right, let's go see what I got from line cutters. That's what I have available right there, the uh, zipper uh, pull fish line cutter to attach your zippers. And we got the rings, and then we got a, a mounter right there. Wow. And that's crazy that they've, they've gone that many times without an inspection and stuff like that. And, I mean... <sighs> It's crazy that it's gone that long and not being able, um, not been forced to actually do what it needs to do. You know what I mean? So, What's up, Darren? How you doing? Yes, happy Friday. See how it's falling apart right there? So what I have to do is I have to get another piece of tape and tape it right there. That way it'll hold in place so I can continue doing what I'm doing, so.
you know, and, and if, if it was like that and they got fined and stuff like that, don't all these ships have some kind of deal where it can tell them, hey, you know, uh, this ship is located here and stuff like that? Because you see it, like they were able to follow the ship's log and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure Coast Guard and stuff like that have the ability to track whatever ships are out there. And if they do, why wasn't anything already done about it to make sure these ships were up up to speed on what they needed to do? I mean, I'm hoping the reels come in because I want to do a spooling video, but I'm waiting. I'm just hoping I didn't miss them this morning while I was out on the road. But they normally don't come in real early in the morning. Normally it's about noon to two is when we start getting our shipments in from from reels. So I'm waiting on that. <clears throat> See, I mean, they're, they're, what's crazy here, and, and, and I've, I've been thinking about it because I've been seeing a lot of it, like, here in the U.S., when we're trying to travel and stuff like that, there's so much security on us trying to travel and stuff like that, yet, you know, they had the open borders and stuff, and now, you know, this, this ship that has not passed its inspections or anything like that was even allowed into the waterways here. With that kind of knowledge going, like, oh yeah, well, then you and me both, boss. I, I, it's been a while since I've done an arrow like that, so I want to, I want to check it out. I tell you what, I don't know how many times I spool a reel. I still just, you know, as long as I ain't been doing it for ten hours that day, I, I'm really excited to spool reels. <laughs> <laughs> and and I hate to crack a joke, billion dollar. Uh, but uh, you ever seen the movie uh, Lord of War when he has the pilot and he's like, "Hey, you're gonna land here, this and that, this and that," and and uh, the guy was talking about that he was third in his class or whatever, and or last in the class for for flying and stuff. And he goes, "No, you're still, you know, he's still giving him a lot of credit and stuff like that." Of this, like, well. Who's to say, you know, the captain was one of those lower lower end guys right there that just barely passed, but he's behind the helm of a boat, like, you know, that is, that's crazy, so. Well, William, like I was, I was talking about earlier, you know, with with the gear and having, you know, all the other reels that I've had, you know, with Penn, Shimano, Newell, Abu Garcia. I mean, I really am horrible, horrible on my reels. Like, and, and people see it all the time, like come in and they're like, you know, they want to see the reels. Like if I really do have them like that, I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm like, yeah, like. I don't take care of my gear. I really don't. Because um, once I get back, I'm super, like, I've, I've finished, I'm expent, I'm done. I don't want to come back and have to open up my reels to clean them and do all of that. And the only time I ever do with my gear is if it falls into the sand or it actually falls underwater and it's sitting there in the wash or whatever. Yeah. No. <clears throat> And yeah, going from this, from that pin, I not to this 50. 
you're, you're going to be giving away that nine out. Like, I, it was, that's the way it was for me. I had six odds, nine odds, four odds. I probably had 15 four odds. Uh, two six odds, one nine out, one 12 odd. And once I started playing with these two speed reels, it was just like, okay, I'm never going back. Like, there's no reason to, to, I mean, granted, we fish, we fish hard, we put a lot of effort into it, but at the end of the day, fishing has changed. It's evolved into more healthy practices to allow us to fish and land bigger fish faster and release them because there's a lot more um, laws in, in place to protect species, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I've seen other countries where, like, they didn't even allow them to fish, like, at all. You couldn't fish. And or other countries that have one rod per person, one hook per rod, like, Man, you know, we, we're spoiled here, but we also still have to maintain the fact of not, you know, pushing the boundaries because, you know, just as easily as they have taken away, you know, fishing spots because of how dirty they are, they could definitely take away, you know, our ability to go out there and enjoy things when things are taken advantage of and stuff like that. And yeah, it does get a little crazy. <laughs> Looking for my email for the prices and on the rain cutters real quick. Oh, that's ain't good. Hold on real quick, guys. Just got an email from Abbott that they're not making uh, left-handed reels in any color other than uh, uh, silver. Okay, so uh, I read your comment about uh, Pen 9 not, not having any problems with them. Um, for me, it was the problems I was having was when I used my surf weights running my bait out and not catching anything and trying to pull that weight in. So I had to use, you know, 10 foot rods with backbone to break my back to pull those weights in, you know, for that. And then once I went to dropping it down in low gear with the two-speed reels, that's when I saw, I was like, okay, man, things things are going to change for that. Also, too, with the ability to 
engage my drag really quick without having to try to lock down the star drag was other reasons why I altogether went from star drags to lever drags. And it has definitely been a great, great change right there. What's up, Sam? How you doing? No idea. So I'm waiting on an email now from a customer. <laughs> that that right there, you know, offshore fishing with these those reels is a totally different monster for sure. Um, not having to deal with dead weight of you know something just sitting there and not wanting to let go is one thing, but also too, when you're offshore trolling, fish want to do that. They want to drive dive straight to the bottom and at bottom and not turn. With the low gear on the reels, it allows you to drop it down in low gear and. Even when he's pulling away from you, if you sit there and you crank, every time he turns towards you and he gives you those few inches and not be able to pull everything off, you can actually gain a lot of uh, ground with that. And especially if it's a big fish, those big head shakes can move a foot or two a line every single time. So you actually can land your fish a lot faster with them. So I, you're, you're going to enjoy it. You really are. They, they are... They're a beast of a reel, the drag and all of that. And when you go to reeling them in and stuff like that, um, the handles, you, you won't be as tired fighting a fish for sure.
Yeah. And actually, years ago, um, what I wanted to do instead of actually getting, because I still wanted to stay with my, my single speed reels, um, there's a company that actually made adapter setups for single speed, like 9 aughts and 12 aughts, to make them into two speeds. And, but when I started looking at the price, I was like, damn, man, I already spent, you know, $200 on this reel spend another 300 on it and on the hopes that it would work you know it, it, it kind of like I was like I don't know about all of that so I didn't do it and that's when I started getting into the international VSW2 speeds and using those for uh, shark fishing on off the piers and stuff like that because at the time I really didn't fish the beach when I first started getting into the two speed reels but once the period started closing and they started doing all of that, I started fishing down the beach. And uh, that's a whole nother monster right there. Beach fishermen are another breed of hardcore guys that go out there and have to put up with the elements 10 times more than any pier fisherman. And uh, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> wear and tear on you, your body, your vehicle, your, your gear. Like it's another deal. <clears throat> Almost, almost done with these weights. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't know exactly what is, what, what they're planning to do. I know uh, they're supposed to go visit uh, one of the sister-in-laws and one of her best friends as well, so. Oh no! To tell you the truth, that's a good good question there. I buy from Amazon, but I don't I don't I don't pay attention to all of that. I just put my purchase products and go from there. So. Yeah, fish gum is trying to ask us for our sales information, our tax ID and stuff like that. But I told them I wasn't going to sell their product until I got their updated gear to go out and test. Because the last time I got it, yes, we caught fish, but we ate through the bag so fast that like I, I, I don't like having a rebate. You know, if you're using a product like fish bites or um, uh, Berkeley Gulf and stuff like that, you, you don't want to have to keep rebating every couple of minutes, you know, because they tear up the gear. So that's what I was looking at. And even sometimes you wouldn't even get a fish. Like the perch and everything would rip it off the hook within, you know, a few minutes of be being in the water. So they said they improved it, but we never got it. So I'm not going to purchase the product until I actually tried that.
Our life. You hear a whole bunch of uh, telecommunicators on the background. Yeah, no, I'm good. Um, heavy pockets. Yep. No good. Somebody get that off of there for me, please. Actually, I don't have any blue wrenches on here, so I'll do it myself. Oh, man, I am almost done. I probably got 30 more weeks to do, and I'll be done with this evolution of my surf weight deal. So, uh, um, no, the, the fish gum is not a soft plastic. It's an artificial bait that... Uh, it's made with products to attract, like fish attractants, but they're in a, they have a, a mesh inside to keep it on the hook, and it's a formula that's, you know, like I said, I've caught fish on them, but I don't like the fact that I have to eat through it, you know, so fast, you know, one pack per trip kind of deal, having to rebate the hooks every, you know, few minutes because it's falling apart or falling off the hook. And they said they originally designed it like that, so that way, because people were complaining about fish bites and how they have to use a pair of pliers and all of that. So I understood it at the very beginning, but I didn't realize how how different it was, you know, going from fish bites and losing the bait really quickly to um, this fish gum and having to rebate every every few minutes or after every fish, you know, having to put on a new piece. You know, I'm all about saving money as well, so I had to give a little and take a little. So uh, I didn't, I didn't, I really wasn't impressed with the fish gum in that sense at that time. Now they say they have upgraded their gear to um, for it to last on the hook a lot more, and it's supposed to be better. And and, I'm, and there was other things that I liked about the fish gum, like it didn't get like the, the fish bites where it got hard after sitting there for a while like you can leave it in the heat and it wouldn't get hard like the, the fish bites would or it wouldn't lose its color so there's there's some give and take you know what i mean but at the end of the day too i'm also wanting a, a product that i'm gonna get my money out of it you know what i mean and landing four or five fish if they're hidden on one bag of bait is still i kind of feel expensive for me so i wasn't gonna do that Yeah, yeah. All right, Detroit. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We'll look at that. Um, <clears throat> one. Looks like I might have to get a few guys on here for the day, the day show. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, it, well, um, do you know about fish bites, Detroit? Have you tried those? If you don't, then I can show you what they look like on my hooks. And actually, I've got some in my truck, and I can show you. Uh, uh, what's going on there, William? What, what's on the news to, to set you off like that? Got a weight order from Causeway. Looks like I might have to be putting something together. Which I don't mind doing. I just wish they wouldn't do it on a Friday. Like, do it on a Monday. Right. Cool. I think... 
I think we got all of what the request and let me finish taping these, weighing them out and then marking them. And then y'all might end up taking a road trip with me. Yeah. All right, uh, Detroit, if you want to give me just a little bit, I can go to my truck and get my tackle bag out of there and I can show you what the fish bites are. Um, yeah, very, very, very cool bait. Uh, they use it in both fresh and salt water. Um, they do have a, a fresh water blend, but we've actually used the salt water ones in fresh water and still caught fish on it like that. I sent, I actually ship a lot of my fresh water or the salt water ones up to the guys in fresh water and they use it that way, so, yeah. Oh, excuse me. All right, I'm gonna finish these off. I'm gonna go get my tripod and uh, we'll move out back so I can get these weighed up marked. Because we're gonna need some of these weights for the weight order as well, so that works out perfectly. It is definitely uh, showing, you know, showing the guys how much work it, it takes to actually make this happen and how committed I am to making it happen. And if I'm, you know, willing to put forth that much effort to make it happen, then they, they should be equally doing the same. You know what I mean? Wow. Damn it. Well, give me a second, guys. Let me go get this set up, and I'll move you all over there so you can see what's going on. So y'all can see the wires that I cut last night. So I know I don't know if I showed y'all yesterday, but you know I was talking about how the wires were all, you know, obviously when we first start out, we'll have a few that are offset on the length, but after it's all said and done, 
they'll all be the same size. And that's what I was looking for. And like, you know, it's been here months. It ain't something that's new that just started. You know, he's, he's probably done, cut probably five or 10,000 wires and had to learn the process on its own. And I had to keep reminding him. Got to draw the line. Let me grab uh, my scale real quick. <laughs> Might as well get a mark while well I'm at it. Check your email for that real quick. So, uh, again, that was uh, fish gum, and they were saying, well, basically, since I won't give them my sales information, because I haven't purchased products from them in a long time, that they'll, they'll put me as a taxable company or a taxable person uh, for future orders, and I'm like, or, I'm, like oh, I'm not going to buy your product until I've actually tested it and seen what it, it is doing now, because... For me to carry a product, I need to ensure that my customers and my subscribers who purchase the products will be happy with it. Because if not, I don't like wasting any money. I'm not going to have y'all waste any money either for purchasing products like that that aren't going to last or give you everything that you're requesting. So, yes, we we do that. Uh, the, I'm just now opening it up and seeing. Uh, Yes, now I have a jig set up so that way when they cut the wires, uh, it's automatically set for that. However, occasionally when we buy the case of, of welding rods, they may be off, you know, a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. So each box, as it comes out, we have to reset the jig to compensate for the measuring that or the different lengths and stuff like that as well. So. <clears throat> But at the same time, I've taught them how to do all of that. It's not real hard, but they don't pay attention. And when it does, it ends up coming out of my pocket, you know? So real hard to get in the black when you're, you're always having to compensate with all that red that they're doing, you know? So. so what I'm doing now is I'm weighing the weights out and I've got three ounce to my right four ounces to my left. It just sucks when I'm doing it like that. Actually, let me do this real quick. And that's the other thing too, like watching them and they're like this. Like no speed, no intensity, and 
I have a problem with that. Like, work with, like, you have a purpose, you know? It's, it's all about getting through it. And yes, we, we do this time and time and time again, but that's the job. You know what I mean? Every job has its repetitions of what you got to do, but there's also ways to speed it up when the gear allows you to do it. What's up, Prue? How you doing? I am sorting my surf weights by weight. Um, we have one mold that allows us to pour these weights, and we just got to double check our work. Hard to find people that you have care for. Thank you, Detroit. Yep. Yep. No, I, Patrick, I could, I could totally see that because as y'all can tell, I hold many hats. <clears throat> and uh, I have no problem doing it, you know what I mean? But when guys aren't pulling their weight or doing all of this and I have to do their job and then they want to be upset. But, hey, I'm, I'm not getting the pay. I'm like, look, you're not doing the job that, you know, warrants that amount of pay. You know what I mean? And like I said, I've multiple times I've had guys challenge me, you know, workers to, hey, man, what if I if I can do what you're doing? Can I get to, yeah, sure can, but you got to do it day in, day out and never slow down. Like you slow down then why am I going to give you a pay raise for one hour of good work? You know what I mean? If you keep that pay day in, day out, trust me, it will show. The amount of work will be there. The pay will be there. But if you're not doing it, then I can't, you know, can't do it. <clears throat> that or they, they come in and they only want to do that one specific job that they learned that I told them that I was bringing them in for. You know, and, and the reason why I was offering those other positions is they, they paid more, you know. I figured they wanted that and, you know, trying to help them out when they're talking about they're, they, they're not making enough and this and that. Well, they they wanted more pay raise, but not encompass the extra job tasks that would be entitled with it. So. see why would you do the lotto uh, I definitely have leftovers uh, I'm pretty sure we won something it is very rare that we we don't win something on the lotto So I was telling, I replied on the email with fish gum that, hey, man, I am live right now. And I'm talking to my customers about fish gum and fish bites, what I did like, what I didn't like. But, you know, at the end of the day, having the more dislikes on the product is going to keep me from wanting to buy more. So if they did all the upgrades they say they did, then they shouldn't have a problem at sending out some product for me to test out. And to share about it, because, yeah, I'm all about having good product coming. But at the same time, I'm looking at my overhead, as well as all customers that look at, you know, um, the tackle they're buying, how much money they're spending, is it worth it? You know, hey, we're all bargain shoppers. I'm a bargain shopper, too. 
So I'm always going to get the best bang for my buck because I know it's going to be the best bang for your buck as well. So. <clears throat> That or like, like I just marked all of those. I've seen where they're sitting here like this. And I'm like, come on, bro. Like even me moving, fa I, I, that was a lot faster than I've seen them move. All, all the techniques that I do, I teach them how to do it so that way we can, we can, you know, I mean, obviously, if I want them to produce a certain amount of product, I've got to teach them how to make it happen. And when I teach them and I see them doing their own thing, it really, really aggravates me because, you know, how are they going to want more or produce more if they're doing it the slow way because they feel it's a fast way. Sorry, when it comes out of your check, then you can do it any which way your little heart contends. But when it's coming out of mine and our customers, I have to ensure we're doing it correctly. And the good thing about me doing this right now, I know 50 of these three ounce were needed for an order. So I can actually count out the 50 that I need for that order that just got placed. And I actually killed two birds in one stone. So. All right, now y'all can see what I've actually completed here. So those are my four ounce surf weights. And you'll notice that some will be a little higher than others. But what ends up happening is we have a thinner mold and a thicker mold. So with the thinner mold, the, you don't have the, the diameter, so it pushes the weight higher. When it's thicker, it comes down lower. So that's why you'll see the offset like that. But that's why I put it on the scale to verify. So. Those are all the three ounce weights right there. And I've seen where it took guys hours to do this and I've done that in pretty much no time. So. Five, ten. And then also too, like miscounts on, on the lead, on the weights. And what I'm doing here, I've had to do for myself because I'll be talking to a customer or I'll be talking and I'll get sidetracked and lost in thought and I'll forget my count. So I pretty much make it impossible for you to mess up because you don't actually have to keep count to the very end when you count up. And this is one way of doing it. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's all I need for the order. So I can move the rest off and put them up front on the shelf and that was all the lead that was left over on the wires right there so that will get melted down i just need the bin over here let me double check that. yep true that let's see what they say um, I don't know. Let's see if they respond.
Sí. Okay, hold on real quick. I got a customer up front and there's give me a second. Let's go back up here. What's up, boss? How can I help you? Um, if we have the 3.3, those will be in aluminum, not, yeah, they don't, they don't make, uh, the double minis in that same size. It's Actually, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, the 3.3s, I think it's the biggest I have. What size cable are you trying to put on? Got it here? I haven't got another weight order in. Things haven't been working, so it's going to be a little bit bigger depth weight on it. See if this works for him. He's asking for 3.3, but I've never seen a 3.3 in the double mini sleeves, and that's what we're using right there. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> no, the, that's not going to fit that. Uh, are you using this for shark? Gar. For gar? Why are you using so thick? Gar. Oh, I've been catching my big uglies. Huh? Catching my big uglies. Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to fit. Uh, that that 3.3 right? Huh? That 3.3. Yeah, but I only have aluminum. And the bad thing about doing stainless to aluminum is they oxidize each other. So it'll hold for a little bit, but not forever. Like with these... 
You put them on there, they'll last pretty much forever. Now, here's the thing. Using that for Gar and, and, and Big Uglies and stuff, that's way, way overkill, bro. It's too, too much. I'm going to show you what I use for alligator. I've already proven that this works as well. I'm going to draw it out for you because uh, this is real important, especially if you're getting shark fish. All right, so you have shark teeth, right? Like this. And they fit in between each other like this. All right? So if you have that, let's see if you go can see. All right, so if you have that, and then you have this big old cable right there, what's that shark tooth doing? It's penetrating the cable. And since it has nowhere to go, it's going to cut through it. I've seen that bitten through in a split second. The real one. And then that was it. What, like 300 pounds? No, that's like 1,500 pound cable right there. The two, the cable I just showed you, that's 250 pound test. So with that, you're going to get cut off. But because I'm using that little thin cable, it sits like dental floss. So it sits right in between the teeth, and they can't really penetrate it. Mm -hmm. If it's too big, they're, they're going to eat right through that. And basically, you're going to be throwing away the hook every single time. Unless you hook anything other than a tiger, it'll work. But it's going to come back damaged and all of that because their teeth, even tiger teeth, bulls, everything, they're going to penetrate that cable, and it's going to, it's going to be the worst thing for you. So then with, with this, like, what do you think, like tuna? Uh, they, they use monofilament for tuna. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So this, what would you think of this for? Nothing fishing. Nothing fishing. Um, well, you can build what I built years ago. Well, you're going to have to look at it this way, too. You're casting those leaders, right? Yeah. Feel how heavy that is? That That's not going to give you get great distance. You're going to be lobbing it from here to my truck. If they're out there 80 yards, 100 yards, you're not going to be able to reach them because the leader is so heavy. Remember, you're adding bait, you're adding weight, you're adding sleeves, you're adding your snap swivel. And you're trying to throw it, you're not going to get a lot of distance on it. So that, I would highly, highly recommend not. You use that to make chokers for your gear, for your, for your leaders and stuff like that. I mean, not for your leaders, but for your for your rod and reel. So when you're out on the pier, they don't steal your, like if you go to sleep, lock it, put, up, lock it up. Yes. That, I would recommend for that. Uh, but for, for leaders, no, don't. No, no, no. no. I, I'll walk you through my wall right now. Oh, my head is Ten on that.
Uh, you got to call the card in. It's a new card. It's still, I don't know, blocked it. But it's still in here. It's still on. Follow the channel, man. I've got a lot of videos in there from when I went alligator bar fishing and stuff like that. <laughs> all right, boss. You have a good one. So. All right. So I don't know if y'all got to see that, but that is, we actually proved this too many times before. Uh, one of our 600 pound cables uh, was actually coated. And when they brought it back, you know, c c uh, coated cables twist like this. Well, the shark had bitten through it so many times that it actually came back straight. Like it was straight lines like this on the coated cable. And it was in one section here and another section here. So it was on the teeth, biting, 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 and he couldn't break not a single strand of the coated cable. And it's for this reason. If you make it feel like dental floss on them, you're not going to get cut off. So, but, uh, all right. Let's see. <coughs> See. Well, they replied, okay, sounds good. So let's see if they're willing to send us some tackle to try out. But if not, then I don't know. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, Oscar, I did I did try to get them to do that and of course, yeah, no, no, no. They can and then, so at that point, I told him, well, then stop messing up. Stop doing things that are going to cost me money. Because when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, it's not coming out of their pocket. It's coming out of my pocket. And if that's the case, then they don't, they, they're not going to have a job because I'm always fixing the, 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 the problems there, you know? So, even, even when it happened, like, uh, a few years ago, I... Uh, the sales were extremely, extremely slow. So what I did was I took out a loan to make sure my guys could work through the holidays so I didn't have to let go of anybody during Christmas and time frame. So I took out a loan and I paid them and all of that. But then at the end, I was like, hey, man, next week is New Year's. I was like, I'm going to have to start a new program. I can't have everybody I said, if you're working here, no more cell phones. You cannot be on your cell phone while you're here at the shop. Unless it's an emergency, they can call the shop. We can get a hold of you and go from there. Well, no, no, that's not right. You're on your phone. You're always, it's like, excuse me, did I miss something here? Like, I'm paying your check. You're not paying mine. Well, you're always doing, uh, like, okay, I'm the boss. Like, I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing your job. I'm supposed to be doing my job. My job is finding new sales, finding new customers, keeping the advertising going, paying your payroll when it comes time for it. And I've done all of that. Well, you're never... Like, it, it always boiled back to that I had to be working on their level. And I'm like, no, that's that's why I have you here. Like, if that's going to be the case, well, then I'll fire you and I'll take your position. So, when once I said no no cell phones, they're like, no, nah, that's not right. And they all walked out. I was like, okay. So, that tells me that, you know, they picked, you know, being on their phone more important than having a job. Which sucked for me because I took out a loan to make sure that they were taken care of for the holidays. It's like, wow. Yeah. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Get out of here. Oh, it's double, triple, and quadruple counting. All right, let me get this up front.
It's Friday! No, no doubt. It was, uh, and yeah, it's a pretty thick cable. I've actually seen where uh, the, uh, the cable, I mean, it was, it, this was a long time ago. I was probably 13 years old when I was 12. Uh, I saw a big reel. It was on the rail and it went just like that, real quick. And then it was over. So the guy, the guy was sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. Sitting there. Finally, probably you know, hours later, he's like, "Well, I'm leaving already. He didn't catch anything." So when he did that, the cable was clean cut. It took off and it was right in half. Oh, that kind of taught me never to use thick cable because of that reason that it doesn't allow the uh, uh, the cable to breathe. Uh, let me go get a tray. I need one more thing.
The reason why I'm setting these there is because they didn't get properly taped. So because they didn't get properly taped, I don't want to send them out there like that. So I'm going to come back and retape those here in just a minute, but I'm going to get this back up. No, I did not get my McDonald's. By the time I got set and done with everything, I was too tired and just called it a night. So did not get that. That way, I don't. I mean, right now we only got the two orders. We got line cutters and this one. But just in case I put them away, at least my workers will know hey, this order is for Salisbury. So I can get that one. Uh, yeah, still working it, guys.
try and try and handle two things at once. So I got three, four, six, or four. Twenty thirty five. Well, that's it. Okay, I, I I hear you on that, but like I said. When we originally talked, I heard you telling me that you had nothing but black ribs and that you were trying to keep it black because I told you that they said they only had them in silver. So that was the argument. That was the argument I had with Abbott trying to figure that out. And so that's what I was talking Yes, yes. Yeah, so that, that's what I was going off of. And even in the email, I have it stated that, you know, I ordered the black ones right there. And, yeah, they should not have sent them out. But I was thinking you had those drills in hand uh, because you said you, you had gotten other ones. And I was like, well, shoot, if they're getting other ones, then why am I not getting them myself? So that's that's what I was going under right there. But, all right, well, let me, let me get with them. And uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like working with her too much. I feel your pain, trust me. I do. So let, that's why I, I'm trying to get all the information from you so that way when I go talk to them, I know exactly what, what needs to be done and stuff like that. Okay, so let me, yeah, let me get with them, and uh, just give me a little bit, because I'm pulling a weight order, as soon as I can get done with the weight order, I'll sit down and get an email out to them, and go from there. Uh, awesome. Anaconda. Yeah, 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 I had, I had to think of something, because, um, one of my subscribers was like, dude, like, what, what are you going to call that knot? I'm like, well, I was calling it the hard life knot. But, I mean, I had to really think about it. I was like, dude, that's a really good question. So I was thinking about it because if you think about it, when you start to crank, it starts to tighten up. And with anacondas, when they're going to kill their prey, every time they breathe, it tightens up and tightens up and tightens up. So that's why that's, that's I kind of came up with that idea from that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping it blows up too. So, but uh, yeah, just give me a little bit more stuff. So you can tell I'm live on the channel, uh, put out this weight order real quick. But yeah, I'll get on that for you. Yeah, if they do the exchange, it would probably just be. But again, too, you know, you have the right thing, you know, in mind. You know, if we ordered a left-handed in black, they should not have mailed it out at all. Like, you know what I mean? And from what I understand from the emails, they were just talking about a reel that was non-MC that they wouldn't have that one. So I went ahead and sent the email, well, go ahead, don't, you know, don't ship that one. So they were talking about the silver. And I was like, don't ship it because I have to get with the customer. So if that would have applied to your reels, then I would have gotten with you and gotten your pre-approval before the shipping it and going from there, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, no, no doubt. Like I said, I'm gonna, uh, we'll get it sorted. <laughs> All right, boss. Okay. 
Yeah, you too. Thanks. No worries. All right. Awesome. Cool. All right. So, um, just found, well, not just found out, but Abbott has posted up that they're not making any of the left handed rips, any of them, none of them, in any other color than silver. Well, when I was talking with the customer, he, he wanted a black and black and that and uh, and an A6. But when I was when I was talking with him, I I misunderstood him, you know, because he's got other reels in black, and yes, they made them in black a while ago. But everything they knew they're doing, they're not doing it. So when I submitted my email for it, you know, I got an email back talking about a non-MC not being able to be done in left-handed. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, don't send it. Let me talk with this customer. But they never stated anything about the the, the, the pluses in the left-handed not being done in those. And I was like, well, I remember seeing an email a long time ago about it, but I've also seen, too, where I find out secondhand that they made this color or they made this and they made that. And why didn't we get notified about that? Or why didn't we get a chance to do it? And, I mean, I know I do a ton, a ton of deals for Abbott. Where, you know, even if they don't buy from me, they're buying from Abbott because of me. So because of that, like, I, I you know, I, I get a little, you know, hey, something ain't right here. Like, I do a lot of work, you know. So for it to come back like that, it, it, it annoys me. And then, you know, for a customer to, to have to deal with this issue secondhand, I'm not okay with. So that's why I got with him. And we're, now we're on the same page. We're on, we got that. So now I'm going to have to get back with Abbott and find out why it did shit. When, you know, it's not what I ordered, you know, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, right there. All right. And 25 and 6. So I'm flipping back and forth between the, the YouTube channels. I can see all comments and, uh, Oh, you're good, boss. You're good. We're gonna we're gonna work this up. Uh, sorry. Uh, our condolences go out, and we'll we'll definitely keep her in our prayers. Yeah, that. Oh, that's rough when things like that happen. So. Hands down, I would go with an Abbott 50 because with the Gomex, who's the, who? Those are an overseas knockoff. I don't know anybody that actually fixes them here. Like all the guys that I know, they have to do it themselves or ship it back to them. And to tell you the truth, I'd buy an American made product because it is here. You can get fast shipping on it. If it's overseas, it could be months before you see it again. So I, hands down, I, I would invest the money into it, work it that way for sure. So, um, I rem I remember that that incident. That God, that was, yeah, that was really really sad. I remember that when the kids, all those kids sat in that car. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. 
Alright, so that's that. What else do I need? And I order quite a bit of leaders. And wait, so let me let me finish with the waiting until I move over. I normally don't have to double bag, but I do it just because on the bike chance the weight cuts through the bag. I do have to admit I'm liking the way this new mold is pouring the two ounce pyramid. You know, they don't have a lot of sharp edges because they round it off. So now we got 25 pounds of the two ounce pyramids. Assuming that's a Shimano, correct? Uh, the graphite reels. If you're getting spooled on that, then yeah, definitely time to upgrade on the reel. And if you're going to upgrade, I would highly recommend going with at least an 80. Because once it'll have enough line capacity that you can upgrade your, your reel for line capacity, but two, you can also upgrade the drag so you've got more stopping power, which is going to be a must if you're trying to catch these big sharks. But Bring it in with the notes. Uh, that they're green enough so that way they survive the fight, that they're not going to build up a lot of lactic acid and then end up dying on you on the hook. You definitely want to upgrade to an 80. And then, you know, 130 pound test all the way through. That will be, yeah. be a huge upgrade. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be an investment. But it'll be 
be an investment that will keep you doing what you like to do and elevate your training big. Yes, most definitely hollow core. 130 hollow all day long. So there's 25 pounds of the three ounce. Now we got to do the four. Uh, no, we're actually out of Corpus Christi, Texas. But if you follow our, our videos there, yes, we definitely know how to pull a reel to make sure it doesn't dig in on you. And we will do it with the hollow core braids since that's what we use for our gear. And we, uh, we don't have to worry about that line digging in. Uh, we do need more information from you if you choose to go that route. Uh, we don't. What we need to know is You've been dealing with these bigger reels and dealing with a lot of line on there and getting it back in the way it was given to you. Obviously, the guys that pull on the East Coast do not spool reels like I do here. They, they, they spool it old school style where they gap out the line. What I mean by that is when they're reeling in, they're, 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 they're going crossways real fast trying to keep it from being able to lock into itself instead of with braid, you know, really packing the reel on there, which increases their line capacity. When they do that cross pattern like that, it eats away at your line capacity and you don't get a whole bunch of line. Almost reached in the wrong container. Five, six, four. Now there's 25 pounds of the four ounce pyramids. Now they want the redfish rigs, which are these over here on the wall. So this is pretty cool for y'all. We're going to see an order get pulled, and then I will be going to make a delivery. And this is what we do. Here's the stuff, guys. We make tack off the turn on itself, and supply another type of stuff with it. It's definitely something different. Shark, shark hooks. Be working on this wall.
actually. Bullring. For those, we keep our leaders un, un, unbagged, and the reason for that is because when people are buying fishing tackle, being able to see what they're actually purchasing is a real big thing for us, so it really helps out. But uh, now I'm going to sell them to the packer shop, so we bag them up because they also have the they also have limited space. Like for us, since it's our own gear, we can make it all the space that we want. And actually I found some that were on Jeff's desk, so maybe they're already there. It's 12 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12. Well, bingo. That works. Got that. Then we need a six foot shark casting. All right, ready, ready. Okay, so I did see some things on there, and I thought I was going to have to bag them, but I might not. We, we pulled an order for another store, but they haven't confirmed it yet, so I'm going to reclaim it because this order is confirmed. Three-way long and short circle. Three-way long and short Way short, got those, and they wanted 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. That's short. I'm looking for the Ziploc bag so I can bag these up once I pull them off the wall. All right, you get two far attached. Back, sorry. Thank you guys for sharing the number 
Um, no, I don't have a website up right now. Um, during that slow period, the, the, the company that was handling it didn't see enough sales to keep wanting to help us. And so we had to ditch the, the website again. And, and that's what normally happens to us is uh, we get the website up and running and then sales plummet. And then we're kind of stuck with the website that we're paying for and paying for. And, you know, but again, too, this is all before, you know, the YouTube really kicked up on it. And so, you know, the easiest way is to order directly from us by calling the shop. Uh, they share the number, which is, again, it's 361-334-2171. And awesome. Oh, you're getting it for your birthday. Sweet. When's your birthday, boss? Wanted. We've got the short, three way long. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me turn on the uh... Oh, April 1st My daughter's birthday is actually April 3rd That's pretty awesome And then we got actually several of our team teammates That also, their kids' birthdays in April So we're, we're going to hook it up together And get them all fishing at the same time Which will be awesome Can't we wait Never, you're, you're never, you're never too young to, to go fishing for sharks. I introduced my son to shark fishing when he was three years old. By the time he was nine, he he would literally, you know, if we were out there and some uh, tourists would come out there, he would start talking to the tourists and you know walk them around the pier safely, so that way they didn't you know bump into anybody or run over a bait or get hooked and stuff like that. And you know he would teach them about shark fishing. And a lot of times, some new fishermen that were out there, they're like, man, who, whose kid is this? And they were like, that's Albert's kid. And they're like, no wonder he knows what he knows. It's like, yeah, it's a blessing to pass on the knowledge. So don't, don't ever look at it as you're too young. No, glad, I'm really glad that you are here to, uh, to get into shark fishing and stuff like that. And then keeping that in mind about uh, the awareness of you know, having the right gear for what you're trying to do. It's very important. A lot of people don't take that into consideration. So, man, props to you for that. So. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I, I celebrate my birthday. I just don't celebrate how old it is. <laughs> That's what I do. You know. I make myself feel better by saying, you know, the Marine Corps birthday date on that one because that is something that we definitely, oh, that's a long one. That one don't belong in here. What's up, guys? How you doing? We are here. I'm bagging up uh, leaders for a weight order. Uh, going out to Causeway Pier, they ordered 24 of our three-way black drum, uh, the long, and also three-way black drum short for an order. Um, they also did the kale hook as well. So 
Um, so these are all the leaders I'm having to pull besides all the surf weights that they also ordered. They ordered uh, 50 of the two, three, and four ounce fighter weights, 25 of the six ounce fighter weights, 25 pounds of the two, three, four ounce pyramid, as well as the one and a half ounce uh, pair weights. Um, and cannonball, I have them from one ounce all the way up to um, a 10 pound downrigger. So, yeah. It's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 16, uh, 32, and then from 2 pound, 3 pound, 4 pound, 5, uh, 6, 8, and 10 are the, the different sizes of the cannonballs that we do carry are, are available to do. Ooh, eight largemouth. Nice. Yeah, I was supposed to be out there fishing today, but, um, yep. Now I got to wear the hat of a worker. So. All good. It's another blessed day. Good Friday. Amen. Thank you. Still alive, still able to work, still able to provide, and still able to talk with y'all good people on the channel. So, most definitely. I don't, I don't doubt that, Bob. I've actually had both my hips replaced already. Um, I had to actually back it up. Appendix is pulled. I had my left hip uh, core decompression done. And basically what they did was that on the ball joint, they drilled holes, microscopic holes, to allow blood circulation to um, get back in there because the, the ball joint was dying. And so that, that was a Band-Aid, basically. And then... Uh, while that one was healing, my right one completely went out. So I had to have my right hip done. And then once the band-aid pretty much fell off my left hip, I had to have the left one done. So, yeah. Uh, the three and the four ounce, it's 35 cents an ounce for any of the weights other than a surf weight. Surf weights, they start out at uh, 2.15 for the one ounce and go up 15 cents per ounce thereafter. Uh, Long, the three way long right here, okay. And then tail, three way long and short. Three way long. So I'm going to have to make all the three-way shorts, and I'm one short of the, uh, these are our kale hooks for the big black drum right there. There you go. Let's see. Yes. Um, they've already posted it. Team Hard Life, number one at gmail.com is our email. That way you can get a hold of us. That one is specifically for the channel. So that's that's a great thing. Uh, hold on. Real quick. Then. So what I started doing because bags tend to slip all over the place. I got some pans. I can put them in while I'm kind of trying to sort what I'm trying to sort without it coming about falling down. And now y'all can see why I use the, the metal pans instead of plastic ones. Um, I also use them for when I'm doing my weight breaking and sorting as well, too, so. Ooh, that sounds good. But 
Got to do fish today for sure. Uh, what was the price again? 35 cents per ounce. So if it's a three ounce, 35 times three. Four ounce, 35 times four. Black drum ones. I can't be out of them completely. Like that. Right. You, you from Indonesia. Nice. Welcome to the channel. Will be if they may military service put in the Oof. Yep, yeah, you've you've been you've been through the ringer and back, bro. You've been through the ringer and back. I'm glad I have I don't got all of that, man. That hurts. That's definitely something else for sure, so. Yes, we are working on our 25,000 subscriber mark giveaway. So, yes, please like and share our channel, the link to get more subscribers, because we're about to give away a whole bunch of fishing tackle when we hit 25,000 subscribers. So don't miss out for sure. Also, too, to get into the giveaway, you got to earn your way in. The way you do that is by sharing the link of our YouTube channel and or the videos of our YouTube channel to any social media platform. And you can you can do this, or when you do this, take a screenshot of doing so and submit it to our team hard life number one at, at gmail.com. And that's how you earn your way into our drawing. Uh, there will not be any tickets sold. It will only be for the guys that are sharing the link and that's how you will win. And yes, you can win multiple prizes on our giveaways. We we encourage that because it really does give a lot of effort or give a lot of uh, thank you to the guys that are putting forth a crazy amount of effort of sharing our videos to uh, help us gain more subscribers. So it does it does really show through. So we are really excited on it. Bro, you're, you're a glutton for pain, man. <laughs> you're a glutton for pain, bro. Wow. I remember one time I got electrocuted uh, in Galveston. Uh, was it Galveston? No, I was in uh, Fushan, Louisiana. And I was working on a, a land, well, it's not a, a land rig, an oil rig, an oil platform that was docked up. They were doing uh, upgrades and uh, and all of that to it. While it was there, we were sandblasting the uh, the mud pits. Well, while sandblasting the mud pits, the uh, they had a light from uh, like the parking light, those big old square lights. They had one there. Well, depending on where it was at, the ricochet from the sand broke through the the outer glass and then broke the bulb. So, you know, to change out the bulb, obviously you got to kill the power to it because I had to pull the broken bulb out, which means there's exposed wire. And, you know, so I told the guy to go unplug, and, you know, he followed it and uh, he came back. He goes, unplug. And I was like, all right, it's unplugged. And he goes, yeah. So I went and reached out and grabbed it. And yeah, I, I, <coughs> I, I, I went after the guy. I, I, yeah, I <laughs> very blessed I didn't catch him. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I, uh, so the, the the rig manager actually uh, 
or not the rig manager, but the, the foreman from our crew actually uh, told him, you know, sent him home, you know, for the day because of what he did, because, you know, he could have killed me. One, two, uh, what's crazy is he was getting evacuated off the rig, and while on the uh, the uh, the hoist, he started collapsing. Well, uh, once they got him to the dock, they had to rush him to the ER. They actually had to call an, an ambulance out there for him. Uh, they picked him up, told him, took him in an ambulance, and it came out that it, he had a. Uh, uh, kidney stones. Like, wow. I am really glad I didn't catch him because if I did, I would have not known that. And yeah, it would have been a very, very ugly situation for me, you know? So, yes, you can. It's on Team Real Locos. And actually, I could play it real quick. If y'all are good, I'm pretty sure I'd, I'd like to hit it. Let's see. Let me get on there real quick. Man, they got 13,000 views on that video. So that, That's his channel right there, Team Real Locos. So give him a subscription, check him out.
Yeah, buddy, that's a camera. <laughs> yeah, so Team Real Locos on YouTube. Definitely check them out. Give them a subscription and check out the. They got more music on there and stuff like that. So definitely pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. What's up, Raj? Edgar, how y'all doing, guys? So. in the wave water for our causeway pier. Trying to get this knocked out. Jeff's over there pouring pouring lead, lead right now, so we're running the show. I'm kinda glad it's not as busy, busy as it was the other day. Like literally the phone was ringing every couple of minutes like I got caught. <laughs> Some of the guys are in here. They're like, dude, you're busy. I was like, yeah, that's good. That's really good, you know? Because you got to have the workers to back it up. You know what I mean? Oh, man. So, what's everybody's plans for today? I mean, I know it's Good Friday. Anybody got any special place in mind or are they going to do their own cooking? I know a few of y'all have said it, but I just. Uh, Checking it out real quick. What's up, Josh? How you doing, boss? I'm bagging up six foot shark leaders. I've got them in multiple colors. I got clear, pink, black, red, and dark blue. As of right now. You know, I know they had eight or nine different colors of monofilament at 400 pound test. So let's see about getting some more different colors put in here. Uh, like. Well, actually, uh, on that, the the weight really does not matter because what we do is we do flat rate priority shipping. So we can actually ship up to 70 pounds of weight in a large flat rate box. And you'll only have to pay like, we cover the whole box with insurance. So you're looking about 25 to $30 for that amount of weight if we send it through the flat rate priority. Um, the smaller boxes, I think, are like 10 to 12 bucks. But again, once we add insurance, it takes it up. So yeah, no, we can definitely do that. And uh, yeah. No problem. That's 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 one of the good things about USPS. They have the flat rate uh, boxes like that that allow you to to ship uh, a lot of weight without it costing a crazy amount of money. So yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, that, that could mean you could take a road trip and come down here and come fishing. <laughs> Won't be such a bad thing. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> also, too, depending on how much you order, uh, we definitely, you know, on bulk orders and stuff like that, we we definitely like to work with our customer. Now, those items, originally, if you were just to buy one of each item, it would start out in a small flat rate box. However, if you buy enough to where it doesn't fit in the small flat rate box, what we do is we'll cover the difference to put it into a medium or a large, and you only pay the small flat rate box. So, yeah, now you'll, you'll be good on that. So, uh, what's uh, 438 pounds? Yes, yes. Uh, I saw the post up that you you got a new job. Uh, definitely, I, I'm so sorry I have not been able to keep up with everything going on on the uh, on the group chat and stuff like that. It's been 2024 has finally hit the ground running. Okay. Oh, okay. So 10 each. 
we can put that in a small flat break box, no problem. That would probably, I think, insurance and all, you're probably looking maybe 12 bucks. And and again, too, uh, that, per, that price pretty much stays the same for shipping. Like I said, the, the shipping cost alone is one price, but once we start putting insurance on there, that also fluctuates with the amount of tackle that's in the box. However, uh, with that, you know, it, it shouldn't be more than, you know, uh, the shipping comes with $50 of insurance already. So we won't have to add anything more to get that gear shipped out for you if you went that route. However, if you bought enough to where it was more than 50 bucks, then I would have to pay for the additional shipping. Uh, and that's where the, the price would, would vary. But other than that, the small flat rate fee of the small box will stay. Like you, you uh, like I said, you know, one liter goes in a small flat rate box. But if somebody buys 50 of them and I have to put in a large flat rate or a medium flat rate, they still pay the small flat rate box fee. The only thing that changes is the amount of insurance. That's the only thing. Yeah, no, we, we started doing that years ago because uh, that was the other thing why the, the website failed. Because trying to get shipping costs to offset, you know, in that fashion would literally take somebody getting the order in and then processing it and then applying the shipping cost for it. So, and that literally took one person you know, sitting there at the computer and checking it every day to make sure that any orders that came through it would fall under that deal. Well, since we don't have the, uh, the manpower for that to be done right now, we couldn't do it. Also, too, when people are buying online, they don't want to, you know, they, they get a, that's the word I'm looking for, they get a little skittish when they have to sit there and wait for a price and they can't look at it right then and there. And so, you know, there's draw drawbacks to it. But, I mean, we were trying to be, completely honest with the amount of shipping on it, but, you know, trying to preset it up like that, it wants to charge you for each individual item, the shipping cost of that. So that's where it, it backfires. So kind of hard, kind of hard. I, I hear you on that, Roger. That, that is why, to me, uh, I am with every every worker I have in house. Like I'm, I'm letting them know, like the way it's been going is not okay. It is not. We, I know we hit our slow times and stuff like that, and I can't gripe at nobody but the, but the economy. You know what I mean? Or our current uh, elderly folk in the in the White House that are running everything into the ground. Uh, but at the same time, when they're doing, they're, they're not doing their job the way they were taught, I have a problem with, because then at the end of the day, when I'm having to pay double the amount of labor for the same amount of product, it's not good. Double, triple, I mean, even quadruple. I've, I've actually sat there and broke it down, and one of my workers, I did the same job that they did in two hours that it took them six, so they could have, you know, it, 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 it sucks, but, you know, if I don't put my foot down and, and stick to my guns on it, it really can bite me in the butt. And again, too, I mean, we, we went through a real hard spell of that five months and me trying to get them to understand that, you know, verbally, sometimes it just doesn't work. So them seeing it on paper, that was the next, that, that was like, that's my last straw, guys. Like, I... I don't like having to sit there. I'm, I'm like Roger, you know, if I tell you a job, go do your job. And I shouldn't have to double check on your work unless it is, is something mandatory. You know what I mean? Like uh, quality, quality control and stuff like that, you know. But if I teach you a certain way, we still have that quality control because when I'm done crimping, I have somebody go behind me and check every single crimp. Now, when that person... That I told to check it, that only one job, and they fell at that job. And then I find it later on, that tells me they didn't do their job. Like, they have one job, check crimps. Like, 
do your best, like every single time. Now, the guy that's making the leader, of course, it, it, we know this. And, and that's why I said, even me, I've built, <laughs> oh, in the last 20 years, if I build 10,000 leaders a year, you know, that's what, 200,000 or something like that. Now, multi and you all have been there. When I ate through ten thousand sleeves in one week, from how many mil from how many liters I built, I'm obviously going to miss one. It, it, it's gonna it's gonna happen. I try my best. I double check my work, and I'll find. And sometimes I find them before I pass them off to the last guy. But even then, I tell them I don't care who it is. If it's me handing you a liter, you double check that liter. Like we we have to do that. We have to hold ourselves accountable to everything that goes on in here. And if you don't, then you have no pride in your work. And for me, at the end of the day, when a leader fails, they don't blame the guy who made it. They blame me. I'm the I'm the, always I'm the front man. So I'm the one who gets nailed for that. And because I get nailed for that, I'm tired of being nailed for it. When you know that's what I'm paying these guys to do. So it does it does have its give and take, you know, and uh, everybody says, oh, own your own business, it'd be fun, make your own hours, and it, they don't tell you about all the behind the scenes stuff that you have to do to make it happen, the extra hours, the headaches, and all of that stuff, too, so, uh, oh, man, that sucks, Jacob, ah. dang it. So were, were the pipes easily accessible or were they in the wall? Um, well, Nicholas, that is a, a trick question right there. There's been times where sales were so slow and dead that paying the rent, paying, the, paying all the overhead, workers' hours, rent, materials, and all of that. After working 70 hours here, I took home 12 bucks. So, yeah. And it, and it's not it's not as easy to say, well, you know what? Raise the price of your material or your, your, your end product. It's not that. I built this business from my garage on the numbers of putting out product. So building X amount of product per hour We'll make sure that product stays low in price so that way I can be, compete with other tackle shops. If that one doesn't happen and it takes 10 hours for one hour of work, well, then I have lost nine hours for the same amount of product that was developed in that one hour. So in doing that, that it, it, it eats up the amount of money you can take home at the end of the day. And then trying to explain it to these guys and getting them to understand, oh, yeah, man, that sucks. We'll do better. We'll do better. But it's not coming out of their pocket. It's coming out of mine. What's that, Lawson? Uh, let, me, let me work on that. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling another weight order for Causeway. They, they just placed a big order. So, uh, Okay, I'll get on that right now then. All right, thanks. Okay, cool. Hold on. So... All right, I got to do payroll real quick. Jeff's coming over and uh, to kill two birds with one stone. He's going to drop off the weights that I need for the order. But also, too, he's going to go and get lunch and handle payroll or his payroll. Sorry. There you go. Um, actually, one of the distributors that we picked up had 11 Amazon accounts. So they were selling our product on Amazon, but as the economy plummeted, like he was coming in on a regular basis, weekly, you know, sending and shipping out products and all of that, and we were doing good. We were like, damn, this is going to be great. Well, when all of that plummeted, so did our sales. So he hasn't come to pick up any gear in probably two months. And, you know, it's not because he picked somebody else up. It's just the gear ain't selling. So because of that, we actually had to you know, reevaluate everything and stuff like that. So now that sales are kicking back up for us, we, we probably will go back to the drawing board on that and be like, all right, these are the gear that we want y'all to carry and sell on there. And you know what I mean? Well, 
I'm definitely game for it. It's just I don't have the time to sit there and upload and do all of the you know price pictures and all of that. So it does it does play something else. Sat down and now my stomach is like, hey, hey, we're missing something. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Sitting there thinking if it wants to work. Gotta work, man. Oh yeah, no. No, no snacks, boss. I have I've yet to go to the store to buy me snacks the way I normally do. Uh, I've been I haven't had the opportunity to break away and go over there. So, uh, and then even then, when I did the other day, I still forgot certain things that I was looking for, and those were like the necessities, and I still forgot them too. So I ended up having to go back, and my priority wasn't getting wants; it was actual, you know, the the needs that I needed for that. Definitely gotta get rid of that. Suck it out. Can't do it. Can't do it. Magic markers. Ah, uh, oh, William, you ain't right, man. I just read. Oh, I would definitely, definitely love some of that. Yeah, I, I, I can throw down on some king crab. I really can. I've gone to. Uh, Uh, not Joe's, but surfing crab, and normally they do like two pounds of king crab, and then a, a pound of shrimp, and a pound of, uh, or two pounds of shrimp. And it's normally where I stay at, just because I know that I'm gonna get my money's worth out of that. So. Damn, time is flying by. Mm. If you'll stand by just a second, boss, I'm doing payroll right now real quick. just talking about snacks right now it's like I don't I couldn't eat didn't eat breakfast yet so yeah yes 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 <laughs> uh, please yeah. uh, Cheetos or barbecue barbecue Papa Cole I got some down here, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Fat boy problems, guys. <laughs> yeah, he's always doing that one. Yeah, yeah.
we were talking about that the other day, you know, but before all this economy went to crap, we were, uh, we were doing a lot of, you know, going out to eat and, and all of that. And then the kids are like, why don't we go out to eat anymore? It's like, <laughs> can't afford to, you know, it's, it's so... Grace and Grace says it's cheap for us to go eat and buy a big TV. Not the big. Mm-hmm. We go to we used to go to Bubba and I get the shrimp. 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 The shotgun shrimp. Oh, there, that's so good. That. My tummy set. Nothing else. Nothing else. And then I got to the point where she orders the steak. Over the salad and potato club. Yeah. So she gives me a piece of steak. I'm covering a piece. Uh huh. And the salad. Wow. I'm done. Yeah. So there you can't go. Can't do anymore. All right, guys, the phone, phone's about to die, so y'all have a good one. Guys, if y'all want to get with me, you can call me here in a few minutes, and we'll start getting these orders out to you and set that up. Um, again, guys, thank you very much for watching the channel. Please like and share. We're trying to get to 25,000 subscribers so we can do our giveaways. We've got a lot of prizes coming in and going out, so stay tuned. You all have a blessed one, and it is Good Friday. We will be live later on this afternoon for our Friday drawing, guys. And, yeah, we're going to have to take a look at the – the lottery for tonight as well. So it's on, it's on. Yeah, oh, y'all are, y'all are, man, y'all making me so hungry. Later. <laughs> They're all.